Have you ever wondered what would happen if you put a devil three on a real experiment? Yes, we are going something a little crazy again. Since smart telescopes were released, people have pushed them in very possible way, from straight out of camera images to heavily processed the results. There are so many different approaches, but I kept asking myself one simple question: Can we push it even further? The answer is yes, and it's actually very interesting. Personally, I trust the optic quality of the Devolve Three. In daylight, the images are sharp. The resolution is very solid. But at night, straight out of camera, the stars often feel slightly off. Uh, not terrible, just not perfect. I think. This may not be an optic problem. Maybe it's tracking. The Devolve Three uses blind tracking. Even at 16 second exposures, many frames are still unusable. And yet, the Devolve Three supports 120 second exposures. Can you really resist using that? I couldn't. So the question becomes very simple. What happens when you combine the Devolve Three's optics with real stable echo trial tracking? Today, we are going all in. I mounted the Devolve Three on a Kingstar ST20 echo trial mount. The payload capacity is 25 kilograms. For guiding, I used a TopTac D60 guide scope. Once everything was connected, you have to admit. It kind of looks like a radar system. Before shooting, we did three things. First, we leveled the entire setup. Second, we performed the best power alignment we could. Third, and this is something many people overlook, we aligned the optical axis of the Devolve Three and the D60. The method is very simple. During the day, aim at the distant target. Make sure the target appears centered in both the D60 and the Dwarf Three. Then make that precision in the Dwarf Three. During imaging, only small adjustments are needed. The test location was the same as before. My rooftop with roughly about nine light pollution. I had previously. Shot a solar nebula here using the Devolve Three. This time, I chose the solar nebula again. I wanted to see whether a serious guiding setup would actually make a difference. One important thing to note: in this setup, the Devolve Three's built-in star map does not work. That's okay. We used the NINAR to point to the solar nebula. After pointing, I started imaging. 120 second exposures gain set to 40. At the same time, the D60 and ST20 were also capturing images because no target was selected internally. Live stacking was not available, but that's not a problem. All raw films were saved inside the device. That night, using a dual narrow band filter, I collected 4.5 hours of total exposure. Let's look at the raw results. This is the Devolve Three on its own, with 60 second exposures, and this is the result with the equatorial mount at 120 seconds. The difference is obvious. Tracking stability improved dramatically, except two frames taken during meridian flip or guiding calibration. Almost everything was usable. Now. Let's take a look at the stretched comparison. Overall sharpness is noticeably improved. When we look at several double stars, the separation is visibly better. Stars appear rounder and much cleaner. This image was captured over three nights using the Devolve Three. The total exposure time exceeded 10 hours after server processing. Image quality improved significantly, but when we look closely. The 4.5 hours image with the actual mount still shows higher resolution. Let's compare these double stars more carefully. At this point, 
Let's also show the image captured by the ST20 and D60 used for guiding. Uh, where? Serious the Germany gear is indeed far superior to smart telescope. But that's not all. We also took this entire setup to a board for sight. The torque was M42, the Orion Nebula. This is the stretch result. And this is after base post processing. Because exposure times were different, we only compared the bright regions. In the bright areas, both Ditya and Shabliss improved significantly. Careful viewers may have noticed something. Because no delivery was used during imaging, many vertical noise patterns paired after changing. This caused a lot of fit details during post processing. If you want to try this yourself, I strongly recommend adding delivering. You may lose a few films, but your post processing flexibility will increase a lot. All right, let's wrap things up. Once the device ray is mounted on an actuarial mount, image quality, sharpness, and star quality all improve noticeably. 120 second exposures finally make sense. Of course, the issues are also clear. Wind still affects stars, and without delivering, regular noise patterns will appear. If you try something like this yourself, feel free to share your images in the comments. Please follow me. See you next time. Goodbye.